I know you teach a lot about sacred sexuality mm-hmm. as well. So is it a case of when you start to heal the throat chakra, when you start to balance the throat chakra, that helps you in turn with your sexuality, yeah. with your sacral work? Or is it like, mm-hmm. w- like which, which order does it go in? Like, how does one impact the other? Yeah, they both impact each other um, simultaneously. Some people have their sacral open up and become balanced before their throat. Mm-hmm. It's like they're like, they feel sexy and they love themselves and they're creative, they're playful. And then all of a sudden they're like, I'm able to voice my boundaries a lot easier. I hear that from my community a lot of the more I've been doing sacral work, all of a sudden I've been saying no. And it's actually very true. I think that was my journey. <laughs> now you said that. I'm like, yes, that resonates. It just clicked. Yeah. It just clicked. So some people learn to speak their truth, but then still have a lot of sexual shame. Some people learn how to voice their boundaries and their desire and ask for what they want. But then there's like, they're not connected sexually. This is people who tend to be in their masculine, right? They are direct. They know what they want. It's a balanced, healthy throat chakra, but they are rigid. They are stiff. They're very much in this masculine, which means their sacral still hasn't been connected. Mm -hmm. So it totally depends. What I've seen working with women on this uh, is your upbringing. Like if you were raised in a masculine environment, a feminine environment, a little bit of disbalance in both, and then kind of what friendships you've had growing up along the way, what you were taught, what you had to do, you know, as your career. So I've seen environment be the deciding factor which one opens. Mm -hmm. But the moment one opens, so if you're listening to this and thinking, oh yeah, my sacral's open. I, I feel sexy and creative and fluid and, but I'm still learning in bed to tell my husband, my partner, I don't like that or I want that, or that turns me on or that doesn't, how do I do that? How do I actually start to voice it? And that's where we get to just start practicing self-love of, okay, I love myself enough. I feel that I'm connected with my womb. Therefore, how can I practice letting my womb speak? Mm. How can I practice letting love speak through me? So that's a way to start alchemizing your sexuality and letting that go through your throat by having self-love, having compassion. And then the reverse, when people are in their masculine, the throat chakra is clear, but they want to drop in their sacral. That's where embodiment practices come into place, movement, breath work, all of these more sensual, easy, sensual little baby steps to get into for women to feel their body and then they drop down into sexuality. Mm, Beautiful. And I know that you're really passionate about shadow work Mm -hmm. and I I kind of want to bridge into like shadow sexuality and the dark feminine Mm -hmm. because I know that the way that you express sacred sexuality you are very drawn to like those more like dark erotic arts and I would love to hear like what your journey was like how did you get there Mm -hmm. and how is that now like a part of your sacred practice because for some people they'd be like that doesn't feel so sacred to me totally because a lot of that if they've not done the work or if they've not really looked at it can feel like well this has got to come from trauma or something dark right totally so like I would love to hear your journey Mm -hmm. with that yeah for me and I I when I think of the dark feminine especially around sexuality because we can go into dark feminine in so many different areas but around sexuality that's for me BDSM Mm -hmm. and and very dark feminine work and I want to preface it with had I had this convers or heard this conversation about BDSM three or four years ago, I would have been like, um, nope, I'm out. Like BDSM is for people with trauma. That's some fucked up shit. Like I don't want to be tied up. I don't want, why would someone want to be hit? Like mm-hmm. that's, that must come from a place of trauma. That stuff is too dark. My belief around the dark feminine and BDSM and this, this darker, edgier work is of course we've been told it was bad. Of course, we've been, it's been stigmatized and, and only, you know, weird, fucked up people do that because my belief is anything that society deems is bad is usually really good for us. Like, it's usually actually very healing. And so when I started to do um, sacred rage and go darker into my embodiment practices, I began to feel like lighter afterwards and very almost mm. turned on. I'm like, oh, there's something here. Like I've activated a part of me that 
wants to be looked into a little more. And so I started to kind of feel this embodiment work of feeling a little turned on and activated after a sacred rage. I leaned more into that. And I started to actually practice that through self-pleasure and, and sacred rage rituals. So I would go into sacred rage and then go into a self-pleasure practice. Mm. And the depths and the range at which that took me was like, you can imagine, uh, night and day, quite literally. And the ability of how I could feel in that before and after was just so drastic and empowering. And so I began to look into BDSM and, and bring practices in and incorporate them with my husband. And as someone who was actually physically and sexually abused as a child, I quickly began to learn that BDSM, when done consciously, can actually help you heal trauma. Mm. And this is where a lot of people teach conscious kink to heal trauma like this. So this could, what I'm about to share could sound really weird and fucked up. And I remember hearing these kind of conversations and being like, that's fucking weird. But I was spanked as a child and I was hit as a child. When I got in trouble, I was spanked. So BDSM can actually help you take your power back mm -hmm. with things that were abused to you as a child. I can completely understand that. Because yeah. you're in control. Yeah, you're re-experiencing it, but yes. with a different outcome, yes. different set and setting, different it, relationship. You're leading it. it. Yeah. Like, you're leading it. Mm -hmm. And so when I began to understand this and incorporate this consciously with my husband, I was like, fuck yeah, not only is this like hot because like I'm in control of this and it feels great, but I'm like... Oh, I'm in charge of my body. Like, I get to say who hits me. I get to say who spanks me. Like, I get to do that, not anyone else. Mm -hmm. And the moment we, we spin that and twist that and alchemize that, it's like, oh, hurt people hurt people. Like, I'm taking my power back. Here's, here's that hurt that you gave me. I'm now in control. And this is where going into that dark feminine and, and feel, and, and getting rageful and primal sexually, like that's, that's our innate nature, being primal with sex. I mean, everyone has their, their preferences and what turns you on. But what I'm talking about is we, we, you know, come from caves in the jungle and we're outside making love. So when we go into this darker part, this darker feminine, this very naughty taboo part of ourselves, like to be in leather and BDSM as a woman, like we'd always thought that wasn't feminine. I'm mm. actually a sub, a submissive when it comes to sexuality. And so we also have this, a lot of people have this story of the dark feminine means that she's in control, that like we, we think of this dominatrix, that she's like mm -hmm. whipping her man. But actually, we could be in the dark feminine wearing leather and be taken. Mm. We can be the dark feminine, the prey, and have our partner be the predator. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how deep we're willing to go, mm. how raw we're willing to get. And so how we do one thing is how we do everything. So in sex, in, in, in that dark feminine, in those parts of that Kali, right? That inner Kali that we all have, mm. that part that wants to like slay everyone's heads off and just be in, in, be this animalistic woman that we have within us. When we express that in a safe place while having sex, the most primal, natural thing we can do and the most magical, potent thing that we can do, sex magic, all of that. When we can go deep into our powers that way and do so with a partner who's holding space for that, who's playing with that, think about how we then show up in our light feminine. I like to call it the light feminine. Mm -hmm. This is our everyday version. This is like you and I, you and I right, talking right now. This like leading with light, leading with love, being in our mission, being in our purpose. But it's almost like this inner, your inner dark feminine is like, oh, bitch, I'm still here. Mm. So when we lead in the, in our day life, in our daytime life, in our mission, our purpose with our light feminine, mm -hmm. with our, our, our Isis, our Kuan Yin, right? She is the face. But once we've alchemized and tapped into our dark feminine and know that she's in there, she's alive. She's not shunned anymore. She's not put in a box and shamed. She's powerful. And so it's almost this kinky little version I like to teach of, oh, I know what's inside of me. I've got this kinky little version that likes to be tied up and, and, and hit and all of that in the most beautiful way. She's inside and she's fucking powerful. Like she gets mm. shit done. So when we become that yin and yang, the dark feminine, the light feminine, within ourselves, in our daily basis, we are double powerful, double powerful. 